<clears throat> we're learning the speech <clears throat> of really it's the comments of the Lubavitcher Rebbe that he made in 1958. This was like seven years after he assumed the leadership of the Chabad movement, 1958. And he was he would make the Passover Seder on the second floor of 770 where the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe would make <clears throat> the Seder. And the, the, the seat where the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe sat was always open. It was, it was uh, nobody sat there. Okay. So we explained a lot of things. The Rebbe made some very interesting comments over here. And one of them is that um, the whole Passover Seder is one big blessing. Therefore, we don't make a blessing on it because it's a blessing. And that um, Rebbe Elzer ben Azariah said that he was 70 years old, even though he was only 18, because he looked like he was 70 years old due to the fact that the soul of Samuel, Shmuel, the prophet, became enclosed in his soul. I don't know what that means, but anyway, that's what it was. He got the merits of this. And Samuel, the prophet, died at the age of 58, or at least, anyway, 58 years he got. <clears throat> <clears throat> and so he got all those years, which they've actually affected him Physically, that it was so the Rebbe said, from now we can also learn the same thing that we are also, me and you are also reincarnations of somebody, huh? previous generations. Remember, I don't remember, but I get maybe there's something. This is the great the Arizal, uh, the Isaac Luria could look at a person and tell what he was, who he was. Anyway, only the good lasts from the previous uh, incarnations, only the good. Let's go. Only the good from the previous incarnations last. So this good, and because the Samuel the prophet was totally good, so that became incorporated. In the, so the good that we did in the past uh, incarnations that we were will come and help us. Uh, that we learned that also. Pretty heavy stuff. So we're not alone. I mean, God will help us for sure, even if we don't have any merits. But we do have merits from the previous Google. Okay. <clears throat> A lot of the Haggadah is a drush, it's a, how do you say, a learning. <clears throat> so it says that, that um, Rabbi, Lazar, Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah, when he became <clears throat> the leader of the Sanhedrin, right, he looked like he was 70 years old. <clears throat> so he, they made him into the, so he said, all of my life, all of the time, uh, that I've been you know, learning Torah, I wanted the law to be like me, that we would say the third chapter of Shema Yisrael in, uh, also in the nighttime. The third chapter of Shema Yisrael, Shema Yisrael is a prayer that Jews say, it's a commandment to say twice a day. So the commandment is really in the first two paragraphs, but the third paragraph is usually not part of that commandment. But so why did he want to have it? Because it talks about going out of Egypt. The third, the third paragraph of Shema, in the end of it talks about going out of Egypt, but before it talks about tzitzis, you know, tzitzis, the strands, and tzitzis are only worn in the daytime. The obligation is in the daytime. So you might think that there was no obligation to say this paragraph in the nighttime because it starts with tzitzis and tzitzis are only in the day. So he said, but nevertheless, it talks about going out of Egypt, and I wanted that to be said in the nighttime, <clears throat> despite the fact that it begins with the tzitzis, I wanted to be said in the nighttime. And he said, now that I have incorporated in me this, the merits of, of Shmuel, Samuel the prophet, and I have been made the head of the this, of the Sanhedrin, so now <clears throat> I want to say it because there's a sentence in the Torah that says, in order that you should remember, going out of Egypt, call Yemei Chayecha. All of the days of your life. We have to remember going out of Egypt all the days. What does it mean all the days? To include the nighttime. That's what he said. And no one accepted my opinion, but now they do. 
So all of the days of your life, you have to remember going out of Egypt. And that's talking about this third paragraph of the Shema, because it talks about going out of Egypt. All the days of your life. <clears throat> and I say all the days, not just the days, of all of this means the nighttime also. That's what I say in that law. But the Chachamim, <clears throat> the other rabbis, they say, Yamei Chayecha, the days of your life. Call Yamei Chayecha, that what it says, the days, all the days of your life, is this is to include the days of the Mashiach, not the nighttime. Don't say the nighttime. When Mashiach comes, then we'll talk about going out of Egypt, <clears throat> all of the days of it, nothing to do with night. Right? That's one opinion. That's one way of looking at it. But there's another way of looking at it, and we'll see. Let's look. Have a look. <clears throat> Let's have a look. No, okay. Base Purushim now, Marvazev. And that which the rabbis say that this, the sentence in the Torah that says you should remember the days of going out of Egypt all the days of your life means <clears throat> to include the daytime and also that means the daytime, the daytime, and call Yame means that even in the days of the Mashiach will remember going out of Egypt. There's two explanations that the Chachamim, they add on Ben Zoma. Ben Zoma said that, right, that was the sentence that, that Rabbi Elizabeth ben Azariah used. Ben Zoma said the nighttime, you, you say going out of Egypt, and that was the third chapter of the time. In other words, the chapter of the third chapter of the time you say in the days of the Mashiach, right? Ben Zoma said days of the, the, the wise men, the Chachmarim said you say in the days of the Mashiach. Ben Zoma said, you say it in the nighttime. And some opinions say that the Chachamim, the wise men, right, they were adding on to Ben Zoma. Namely what? That everyone agrees that you say Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim in the nighttime. Right? And he brings all the different people, the Shalon, etc., the Tzalach, and other people. All these opinions say that the 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 chachamim in this case it was talking about the how do you say the perushim the, the the what are called disparagingly the pharisees they not only do they agree with ben zoma but they add on they say not only in the nighttime <clears throat> but also in the days of the mashiach do we remember going out of egypt because you might think the days of the mashiach you won't have to remember going out of egypt it'll be the going out of mashiach will be such an amazing thing we'll forget about the small miracles that God did going out of Egypt. But then there's another opinion that the Chachamim, that the rabbis, they disagree with Ben Zoma. Ben Zoma says that you say going out of Egypt in the nighttime. And they disagree. They say, no, we don't agree in the nighttime. Only in the days of the Mashiach, right, will we <clears throat> say going out of Egypt and in addition to saying in the daytime. Okay, and this is also written in the books of the Arizal and Pri Chaim and other places. Okay, in any case, there's two opinions <clears throat> in the revealed Torah. So if so, there is a place for this also in the inside of the Torah. <clears throat> what are we talking about? That's what's brought up in the Torah is the Pirusha base, the second one. Namely what? That the, the, the rabbis disagree. <clears throat> disagree. We'll see. Tzorich Lomar, we have to say. There's two levels of going out of Egypt. So let me just summarize, just to make this clear. <clears throat> the day that Rabbi Lezer ben Azariah was appointed to be the head of the Sanhedrin, because he looked like he was 70 years old and he got the <clears throat> the, the soul of Shmuel inside of him. That day, so we instituted a law that we're going to say three paragraphs of Shema Yisrael, not just two. We're going to say three paragraphs of Shema Yisrael, the third chapter, because the third paragraph talks about going out of Egypt. And he learned from what Ben Zoma said. And ben Zoma said, all <clears throat> the days of your life, you should remember going out of Egypt all the days that it means in the nighttime. That's it. The law was like that. But there's another opinion. 
And that's the opinion of the rabbis. And the rabbis say that <clears throat> that word, all the days of your life, you should remember going out of Egypt, is talking about going out of, is talking about the, when Mashiach comes. When Mashiach comes, we'll also remember. In addition to the day, <clears throat> we'll remember also when Mashiach comes, because you might think you don't say it. But there's another opinion that say, no, that's not what the rabbis were saying. The rabbis were saying, we agree that you say in the nighttime. We agree you say it in the nighttime. What we're saying is that in addition to saying in the day and the night, you also say in the days of the Mashiach. Okay, what's this got to do with me and you? Says the Rebbe, there's two levels of going out of Egypt. Going out of Egypt in a revealed way, like the Jews did back then, and going out of Egypt in a spiritual way. <clears throat> and when you want to call it an intimate way, personal way, Going out of Egypt in this way, the intimate, personal, soul way, is only in Biyomim, only in the daytime, and not in the nighttime. What does it mean? Spiritually, you can't go out of Egypt when it's night, when you don't see or believe or feel that there's God, then there's no place to go. Why, why should I get out of Egypt? There's no, this is all there is. That's nighttime. The nighttime, when you don't see God, you don't feel God, you don't believe in God, you don't sense God at all. So what do you feel? You feel yourself. And that's called Egypt. So when it's the, you can only go out of Egypt when there's daytime, when God is revealed to you a little bit. You feel that there's something more than just my own ego. Look, and therefore, Stam, it says, and creates Chaim in the Kabbalah book of the Arizal, like the second explanation. Why? Kihu, Medaber, Medaber, because it's talking about Penemius, Shabi Yetzirah, Mishraim. Therefore, the books of Kabbalah hold like the second opinion. That what? The second opinion that you say, talk about going out of Egypt only in the daytime. You never talk about going in the nighttime. Only the daytime. And when Mashiach comes, you'll also add on to the daytime. But nighttime, you don't say. Why? Because we're talking about a spiritual going out of Egypt. And spiritual going out of Egypt, you can't do when it's totally night. In Cain, if so, it's understood why the inside of the Torah, the Panemius of Torah, the soul of the Torah, ain't so terrible, that doesn't contradict <clears throat> to the other opinions. Because Ha'echad Begali of the Torah, one opinion is... And according to the explanation, the first explanation in the revealed Torah, because they're talking about different things, right? So therefore, it's not an argument, just like we had before. What is the first, heaven or earth? What did God create first? So he says, spiritually, the earth was created first. Spiritually, in God's mind, the earth was the most important. The same thing over here, going out of Egypt. You can only go out of Egypt in spiritually, truly, <clears throat> in the daytime when there's godliness. But the revealed opinion is, is that you can go out physically, you can go out even in the nighttime. The Jewish people went out, in fact. It says in the middle of the night they went out. In Yetzirah Mitzrayim, going out of Egypt simply, the intention doesn't mean it means simply going out of <coughs> spiritual Egypt means what does it mean simply to go out of spiritual Egypt? Simply means, let's say, Mikol HaMetzorim, to go out of the limitations that prevent you from serving God. Going out of Egypt spiritually, in a simple sense, means going from. You go from bad things. You go out of those things that prevent you from thinking about God, feeling God. In other words, you go out of your egotistical and your selfish and your negative character traits. Anger, jealousy, laziness, depression, eh, the, the, the aggression, the, the lust. Oh, the, the, the list, it's a long list, right? Long list. <clears throat> That's simply going out of Egypt means going out of the bad. Although you'd see as Mitzrayim, but going out of Egypt in an internal way more means to go out of all of the things 
in holiness itself, <clears throat> if you want to call it self-satisfaction, to be satisfied with where you are, and you, you're in a good place, huh? you're in a good place, you, 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 you do the commandments, and you're a religious person, you believe in God, and you're a Jew, you're proud you're a Jew, and you, you, you keep Shabbos, you do everything, and you learn Torah, and you learn, you learn Hasidus, you do everything, ah, that's, that's it. It says, now you have to go out of Egypt. This is called going out of Egypt, it, a, a spiritual Egypt, a holy Egypt. The limitations, even to the highest of highest levels. <clears throat> That's why it says that Moses was the most humble person in the world. Why was he the most humble person in the world? Because the higher in spirituality that you get, the more you become aware of God. And the oh wow, one second, let's see. Here's somebody else wants to come in. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I have to figure out a way. I'm sorry, I didn't see that you wanted to come in. Okay, wait a minute. And the, the closer you become to God, the more you realize that, hey, I'm just a creation. God is giving me everything I have. The more humble you feel and the higher, the more you feel that you're lacking. <clears throat> That's what it means. You have to go out of limitations, even holy limitations, even that silut, even the highest of dim dimensions, dimensions of godliness, which is called atzilut. Hari af she'iu v'chayu g'ramay echad. Even though that everything is one, nevertheless, it's a world. And so even Moses, that he got up to this level of atzilut, but it still is a world. He still is a creation. <coughs> and to come closer to the Creator is in our ability, and it's in our responsibility. Hine, excuse me, I'm going out of any Egypt. Simply, this is you can do even in the nighttime. What does it mean? In other words. Even in the time when, even in the time when, she'en me'ir b'chines shem ha'shabayah, when the sun, the light of God does not shine, gilei or b'derech milamay lamata, reveal light, which is from above to below, even then it's possible to go out from all of the limitations that prevent you from serving God. What's the nighttime? What do you say? Even if you don't feel God, you don't understand God, you don't have any real, real revelation of God. But on the other hand, you, you can feel that, listen, uh, you know, I, I'm pretty messed up. You know, I have to get out of these bad traits. I don't know if any of you have ever learned, but there's what's called the 12-step program. You ever heard the 12-step program? Very interesting. <clears throat> it's a program to get out of addictions. And it was developed by two people that were alcoholics in like the early 1900s. It's very interesting. And um, and as far as I know, and maybe you can you know prove me otherwise, it's the only method that is effective in getting rid of. I mean, that how do you say uh, that uh, reliably effective in getting rid of uh, addictions? And and then it's only addictive like twenty. It's effective as a twenty percent. If you add on a little bit of the principles of, of Viktor Frankl, well, and we talk about that, then it's, it, it has a greater amount of effectiveness. But that's not the point. The point of the, both this 12-step program <clears throat> and also these teachings of Professor Viktor Frankl that the Rebbe also held from his teaching, they both demand that you connect yourself to something higher. And it doesn't have to be God. It doesn't have to be the God of the Jews. It could be anything that's higher than you. But, but the person is addicted means, and there's like a hundred, I don't know, a thousand different types of addictions. You know, people are addicted to television, addicted to food, addicted to all sorts of crazy things. That, that in order to get out of these addictions, you have to have something, some sort of a connection to something What's this connected that's higher than you, higher than you. But the point is, is that you realize, one second, ah, it's caught, my foot is caught. Do you realize that... Um, you're out of control and that you're in Egypt and that you're, you're doing things you don't want to do. That's self-destructive. Self-destructive. So the only way to get out is you have to have something that's higher than you, even if it's a good friend or something somewhere, something you can believe in that takes you out of yourself. <clears throat> so that's what I mean. Even at nighttime, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> even in the nighttime when you don't have 
a feeling of the creator of the universe and how much God loves you. And this, it's nighttime. You don't have it, but you can go out of Egypt. In other words, you can go out of your negative habits and urges and character traits and and faults. And I think it's possible physically. So therefore, you can also go out in the nighttime. That's the argument we said before. <clears throat> According to one opinion, it means kol yom means <clears throat> the, 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 the Mashiach, uh, in the days of the Mashiach, and everyone agrees that you can go out of Egypt in the day and the night. Did you say going out of Egypt the day and the night? Everyone agrees. <clears throat> the novelty is the days of the Mashiach. <clears throat> That's according to the regular opinion, that you can go out of Egypt in the, even in the nighttime. Spiritually, this is referring to that you can go out of your bad character traits, you can go out of your bad Egypt that has limited you. <clears throat> this you can even do in the nighttime, even if you don't have a feeling of God. I believe. On the, but going out of Egypt, <clears throat> oh, going out of Egypt, namely the limitations of holiness, that you can only do in the daytime. You have to have a feeling <clears throat> of God, of the Creator, of the God that gave the Torah. Then you can feel that there's no end to the what's expected of you to become more and more and more refined and close to the creator. Kasher Meir, Hashem HaShavaya, only when there shines the revelation of God in the world. Lavad, except from Ben Zoma, excuse me one second, I just want to fix this thing up. I know we don't have much time in the class, but it's irreparable. I have to do it. Okay. <clears throat> Beside Ben Zoma, that Ben Zoma, who is this Ben Zoma? Ben Zoma said, <clears throat> that, <clears throat> that you say Shkriyashma in the nighttime. Well, Benzoma happened to be one of the four that went into the secrets of the Torah. He went into the spiritual worlds. There's a story, a very serious, scary story. <clears throat> <clears throat> In the Talmud, and the, the story tell it talks about <clears throat> uh, Rabbi Akiva and four other, three other great rabbis. They're all mentioned in the Haggadah, by the way, Passover. <clears throat> ben Zoma and Ben Azai and um, <clears throat> Alicia Ben Alicia Ben Avua is not mentioned. Ben Zoma and Ben Azai and Alicia Ben Avua. And they went into the deep secrets of the Torah, <clears throat> the mysteries. They knew how to go into these spiritual worlds. And it says the only one that came out unscathed was Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva says he went in in peace and he came out in peace. And as great as these people were, they were all able to go into these upper realms. But one of them died, one of them went crazy, one of them became an apostate. <clears throat> it says Benzoma was this. <clears throat> so Ben Zoma, he said you can go out of Egypt, you can go out of your limitations even in the nighttime. And he obviously was not talking about going out of addictions. <clears throat> so how could he say you can go out of Egypt in the nighttime? He was talking about spirituality, going out of spiritual Egypt, higher and higher levels of holiness. <clears throat> I thought you could only that and do that in the daytime. It says, Ben Zoma, he was one of the four that went into parties. He went into the deep secrets of creation. When he came back to the world, he went crazy. <clears throat> but he, nevertheless, he was a holy person. He went into the seven. He said, you can go out of one spiritual level to the other, even in the nighttime. Even holiness, you can go. From level to level, even if there's no revelation of God, he was intrinsically such a holy person that he could, <clears throat> even when there was no revelation of God, he could go from level to level. How this was, I don't know. But the Chachamim, that they were talking about, the majority of the people, they said you can only go out of Egypt only in the daytime. Look, and therefore, we say the word of call Yemei Chayecha. This is talking about the days of the Mashiach. That in the days of the Mashiach. <clears throat> When the nighttime will transform to day, like we just finished learning in the Mimer, then we'll have power even in the nighttime. Even Jews that are 
far, far away from God in the days of the Mashiach, they'll be able to go out of Egypt. Of <clears throat> all of the levels, even the lowest, the lowest, how do you say, <clears throat> disenfranchised Jew that's totally against God, totally unaware of anything except for himself. And <clears throat> when the days of the Mashiach, he also will be able to go out of Egypt, even the most refined, the highest levels of going out of Egypt. He'll be able to in the days of the Mashiach. But everybody else not. So what have we learned over here? We've learned <clears throat> there's two levels of going out of Egypt. Going out of your bad qualities, going from, that you can do even in the nighttime. You can realize how bad <clears throat> death is, how bad negativity is, <clears throat> how bad egotism is. You can realize that even in the nighttime, even when you don't feel God. Ben Azai was such a high, holy person that he could even do it in the nighttime. Even when there was no revelation of God, he could do it. But that's not for everybody else. In the days of the Mashiach, then everyone, even the people who are in the deepest, darkest nighttime, they will also be able to go out of their personal Egypts and even the highest, most refined levels of Egypt because the Mashiach will elevate everyone, give every show everyone who they really are. That's the point. <clears throat> And they'll show everyone the, what the world really is, how good the world is, how good humanity is. That's the whole idea of going out of Egypt in, by means, in the Mish, days of the Mashiach, even in the nighttime. As we'll talk about more tomorrow. Then we'll finish this, God willing, at three o'clock today in the afternoon. Let's do the Yom Yom for the next few days. Actually, we should have to do it for the next four days. We'll, we'll see. Let's, let's do it.